equals mx plus b, that's one equation. The other one is this one here. This is called the point slope form. If you just apply this equation here, it'll work out for you. Now, there are two different equations that you could write. The first one is if you use the point negative five, three. <clears throat> the x coordinate, we'll call that x1, is negative three, and the y coordinate, we'll call that y1. And then the slope is what you calculated here. Now, this y and this x, just like this y and this x, when you're writing equations, you don't put numbers in for those immediately. You just put numbers in for everything else. So y minus the y coordinate, 5 equals the slope, and then x minus the x coordinate. And then you'd have to simplify it from there. So the point slope form is very handy if you have a point and a slope, or you can calculate the slope. All right, there it is. The bulldozer was purchased by a construction company for 224000 And then it has a depreciation value of $100,000. So it's lost $124,000 of its value after eight years. That's what happens with all, um, you know, bulldozers, backhoes, cars, snowmobiles, anything you want to purchase. Unless it's a collector item, most vehicles, something, things that you can drive will depreciate over time. It'll lose its value. Okay, if the value is depreciated linearly. Okay, so because it's linearly, we know that there's a linear relationship between these two points. All right, so we're going to write two points. Um, one is the time in years. And the other one is the value of the, of the bulldozer. It tells you that uh, at the beginning, you know, when they first purchased this, this is when we start the, the clock running, this is at time equals zero. So when it's purchased for the very first time, no time has elapsed. So time zero, the value is 224,000. Um, and you can probably see what we're gonna, what we're gonna do from here. Um, they say that the, the value is V and that the time is T. So instead of using X and Y, they're using T V ordered pairs instead of X Y ordered pairs because it's a context. But the, but the idea of finding two points and finding the equation of the line contain, containing those two points, that's what we're doing here. It's just in an application. In fact, since this first point begins with zero, this is the Y intercept. It's actually the v-intercept here because we're using different variables. The other point they give you is this one here. And they say after eight years, the value is 100,000. So we have two points. I can just quickly sketch it here. Zero, 224,000. And then after eight, it's down here at 100,000. So there's the line that we're after and see what it looks like. Our two points are plotted here and here. Now, when you find the linear equation that relates V and T, it's like finding the equation of a line. And our steps would be to first find the slope and there are two points. So let's subtract the Y coordinates on top. And similarly, Subtract the x coordinates on the bottom. And I can do that calculation in the, on the top pretty quickly. That's 124. And we're going to divide that by 8. All right. So, oops, I got these switched, don't I? I knew that the, no, the, the slope had to be a negative number. So there's the slope, and there's the y-intercept there. So as we write the equation, y equals mx plus b, that's kind of our generic equation of a line in this context. It's going to be v equals the slope times the number of years plus the y-intercept. So we're using different variables because the context is different. v is the value, t is the number of years, time. 
So we have the slope, negative 15500 t plus the y-intercept, which is the initial cost, the initial value. So that would be the answer to A, all of that. And then it says, what would be the depreciated value after 12 years? Well, after 10 years, it starts at $224,000 is the value of this bulldozer. After eight years, it's only worth $100,000. If 12 years is a value of our variable T, and it's going to ask for what would the value be? So find the V. when t is equal to 12. It was after eight years, it was, um, it was 100,000. So after 12 years, that's four more declines of 15,000. So that's actually gonna take it down, you know, $62,000. All right. So after 12 years, is you know this bulldozer is only worth 38,000. I did provide this handout in the notes for today's session in e-learning. These are the steps that you that you use to go through this linear regression problem that we're going to be working with today. So the idea here is that we're going to start with this graph, the statistical graph, and it's called a scatter plot, and you're going to get a bunch of X, Y ordered pairs, not a large number of ordered pairs, but some, and then you're going to plot these points corresponding to the ordered pairs down here in the table. And hopefully you will observe a trend. Now, there's no single line that goes through all of those points, but there is a trend line and that's what we're going to be after here. In fact, the calculator will, will calculate the line of best fit. And what that means is it'll calculate the y equals mx plus b that we can then make uh, later make predictions for it. So instead of calculating the trend line, you know, by, by hand, by maybe, you know, finding a point down here and finding a point down here, we could become pretty close. But it turns out that the calculator has an algorithm that will give us the best fit line. And I'll show you what that means. And uh, we'll, dra we'll, we'll draw the scatter plot and we'll also draw the line and see that one is a good fit of the other. But I'll walk you through the steps today. Um, outside of class, if you forget some steps, this document is in e-learning and you can walk right, right through it. So you're gonna be asked some of the same qu um, questions, but and you're going to be asked to make predictions just like we did in that previous example where we plugged in 12 for t to find out the value of the bulldozer after 12 years. You're still going to be making predictions that way, but the first step is that you have to come up with the equation. And since the equation is based on real data, a lot of times it's, it's going to be messy coefficients. Instead of having, say, negative 15,500 x, you might have negative 15,493.79 cent times x and so on, but you'll see that. Don't let those decimal numbers throw you off. All right, so we're looking for a mathematical model and our mathematical model that we're gonna use here is the line of best fit. <clears throat> X and Y are linearly re, uh, related. There are other um, trends that you can observe that are quadratic or exponential or logarithmic, but we're mostly focused right now in the linear equations chapter, and so we're going to be looking at linear um, relationships. The slope is going to be, uh, we're going to interpret that today, and the slope means rate of change, the rate at which y change as x changes by 1. The graph that we plot is called a scatter plot. In this whole process of determining the line of best fit and then making predictions with it is called linear regression. Find the best fit line. And sometimes we will interpolate, which means make prediction uh, between our largest and smallest data values. And the other thing we can do is make predictions outside where our data value falls, our data values fall. 
And when we make a prediction that way, it's called extrapolation. But both of them are plugging numbers in for the variable X and then calculating the Y or vice versa. All right, so the first example here, problem number nine, and they give us this linear regression model. But I wanna go through it and I wanna show you how they find this equation. We're gonna get it from the calculator. So if you're following along, we're going to follow this worksheet. And I have my calculator here that I'm going to enter things in. So the first thing I have to do is to enter in the data. And um, to enter in statistical data, to edit the data, we're going to hit the stat key. Most of everything that we do in the stat menu um, or related to statistics will be in the stat menu. So I'm going to press that and it takes me to this screen. All right, edit is where we enter in our X values and our Y values. So our, we're going to put the list, the years in L1 and the production levels in L2. So let's hit the edit key by hitting enter down at the bottom and you'll see the L1 and L2. Now I don't want that stuff up there. So instead of hitting delete over and over and over again and deleting these values out one at a time, you can hit the clear key right here and then enter. And then this list is highlighted. If you hit clear and enter, it'll wipe out all the data in there. And if I highlight L2 and hit clear, enter, wipes it all out. All right, I'm going to enter in. All right, the other thing I have to make note of is that X represents the years since 1985. So I'm going to scratch that out. And I'm going to write my X axis variable here. So X isn't 1985. It's the number of years after 1985. So the number of years after 1985, if the year is 1985, then that's no years after 1985. 1990 would be how many years after 1985. Since 1985, five. 1995 is 10 years after 1985. 2000 is 15. You can see a pattern. You're adding fives here. You're going to be adding fives over here. 20, 25, and 30. And the reason we do this is because they tell us how X is defined here. It allows us to use smaller numbers in our equation. And Y represents the corresponding percentage of total energy production. All right, so there's no need to, to code the Y value here. The, the Y value is just these numbers, but they are percentages. So we have to interpret them as such. All right, so I'm gonna enter in a zero and then hit enter, and then a five and hit enter on the calculator. Enter in each one of the X values first. Or you can see my X list is L1. And then these values over here are my Y values. So I need to make sure that the zero is right next to 85, five is right next to 83 and so on. So what you should, would see is that this table has been reproduced and now it's, it's in there. So that what we did right there is just part A, to enter in the data. We hit the stat key and then enter, and then we cleared a couple of lists, and then we entered in all of the X's first, and then we entered in all of the Y's. The next thing we're gonna do is to set up the scatter plot. All right, right above the Y equals key here is a menu that's called the, the stat plot, and that means a statistical plot. A scatter plot is just one of those statistical plots. So I'm going to hit the second key and then Y equals to get up there. The menu that it takes us to is one that gives us plot one, plot two, plot three. There's three plots that we can turn on. We only want to turn on one. So all of these are off. So let's go to plot number one, hit enter there, and you go into a menu 
where you can configure this plot. The first thing you want to do is if it's off, you want to hover over the on, but then you want to hit enter. So you want to make sure that the word on is entered. Then you have six different kinds of graphs that this calculator will do. You want this very first one. That's the scatter plot. You can move the left and right arrows to get back. But make sure that this icon is highlighted. Now, I don't have to change uh, X list and Y list because I put my X values in L1 and I put my Y values in L2. So everything's good there. And because you have three different type plot one, plot two, and plot three that you could actually turn on. They give you three different markers. So when it plots a point, it plots the different graphs with a different marker. <clears throat> now, if your calculator doesn't say L1 there, let's say it says L6, then to get L1 with the variables it's way down here, uh, L1 in blue is right above the number one, L2 is right above the number two, list three is above the number three, and so on, all the way one, two, three, four, five, six. So I want the X list to be L1. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit second and then the number one, and that gives me L1. Now the next thing we would have to do is to configure the X and the Y axis so that we would capture all of our X values and we capture all our Y values. You generally would do that in the window. So I would need my X's to go from, from at least zero to 30. So if I went say from negative five to 35, that would capture all of the X values. Now the Y values, you can see they're up into the 80s. So if I go from zero to 100, they're all gonna be kind of clumped together. So what I might do is go from 70 up to 90 on a scale of two. Now we're going to avoid this step later on because we're just going to go ahead and hit this zoom nine and it automatically sets these dimensions for us. But let's just see what the graph looks like now. Um, okay, there you can see it. That's what it looks like. And it looks like it's going down and it might come up at the end. Uh, this trace button right here, if you hit trace, then you can jump from one point to the next, and it gives the coordinates down here at the bottom. So 085, 583, 1081, and so on. You can actually sc scroll through each one of your points to make sure that they're all accurate. And 3080. All right, the other thing I wanna show you is, and this is what you're gonna use more frequently is the zoom menu. So I'm going to hit zoom and then the number nine. And if you see zoom nine, um, zoom nine is the, the zoom stat. And what that does is it peeks at your data and it automatically configures the vertical and horizontal axis scales so that it'll capture all of your data points. This is something that you're going to want to do. Notice it zooms in a little bit more than I did. So we set up the scatter plot and we graphed it. So B was to set up the scatter plot. It's where we go to stat plot. And then to plot the data, go to y equals, clear off all the equations, and then there was the zoom nine that I talked about. Now we're going to generate this equation, y equals ax plus b. The a is the number in front of the x, that's the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Our calculator uses A instead of M. That's fine. Okay, so here are the steps. We're going to go back to stat. And the menu on the screen here is calculate. So we're going to move over to calculate. And then the option we want is this thing that looks like AX plus B. This is the linear regression. So go down to linear regression. All right, um, some of you may have the newer calculators that give you a menu. And so generally what I need to do here, I can just hit enter here and it'll give me, give me the equation. But generally you want the um, X list to be L1. So where it says X list in your menu, you want that to be L1. For me, I have to hit the comma and the comma is right above the number seven. The comma goes to the screen, 
if you have the, the menu set up and you don't need to type in the comma, the X, the Y list would be L2. And then maybe it gives you a frequency list. Not sure, you can just leave that blank. Or just put the number one. L1, L2, and then regression equation. You can also leave that blank. I'll show you what it does for you. And then you just hit enter. And this is what you see. Now we get Y equals AX plus B. And so if we rewrite this equation, y equals ax plus b, and they tell us that the a value is negative 0.19, I'm gonna round these to three decimal places, negative 0.193, and the b value is 83.75, then the equation that we're after is y equals negative 0.193x, plus 83.75. So there's our equation. Now let's compare that equation to what you see right here. I don't know if I'll be able to get them both on the screen. The only difference is I rounded to three decimal places down here and they round to one. And you can see that number is exactly the same. So this here is the line of best fit and the number there, negative 0.193, is the slope. We call it M in our normal notation, but the calculator is going to refer to it as A. And you could write this as negative 0.193 over one. And remember the top number here is percent in production. And the number in the bottom is the is the change in the X. And that is year. So you can say and it's a rate of change. So the slope you want to if you actually just use the word rate of change, it might help you interpret it. The way I'm going to say it is for every year, as we go from one year to the next, the production, because of the negative, is going down, decreasing at a rate of 0.193, and this would be percent. So it's decreasing each year at a very less than 0.2%. Um, now, part B, they ask you to interpret the slope of the model. And uh, I said it in words, but I didn't write it out. So let me try it again. Each year, the percentage of total energy production decreases by about 0.2 percentage points. So that's how you would interpret it. You have to make sure that a value of X is listed in there and a value of Y is listed in there. And you can use something about the rate at which something is changing. So when I say each year, I'm actually saying as X is one, the percentage of total production decreases by and then I give you a change in the Y. Decreases means negative. If this slope was a positive number, then we would use increases. So you're gonna be interpreting the slope a lot in these real world application problems. Part A, we did on the calculator. In my math lab, they might uh, just ask you to select from several graphs and scatter plots, which one is the right one. Interpret the slope, we did down here. Part B, and now we're on to C. C is the one where we, where we make predictions. 
And so it says use the model to predict the fossil fuel production in 2025. Now in 2025, that's 40 years after 1985. So in our equation, we have to remember that. And instead of plugging in the number 2025 in for our, our X, we have to plug, plug in the number 40. So it's going to look like this. Y equals negative 0.193 times 40 plus 83 76.03. .03. And remember that the value of Y is a percentage. It's the percentage of uh, total energy productive production. Fossil fuel makes up 73% of the overall energy production is what that means. So we're still fairly reliant on fossil fuels back in 2015. I think that's, uh, that's changing. And you can tell that it's probably changing by looking at this graph. 2015, things have gone up. So fossil fuels are becoming less, less important, oil and gas and fracking and all of that becoming less important. So we're doing a lot more with wind and a lot more with solar. So the production is um, it says going up. So you're gonna see it basically trend down like this overall. And we had a blurb here and uh, where, a blip where it went up a little bit. But other than that, these percentages are going down. All right, in the last one, it says use the model to uh, estimate the first year for which fossil fuel production is less than 70%. All right, now why is the production? So we want Y to be less than 70%. So we'll, we're gonna find the first year. So we're gonna replace Y with all of this stuff y is equal to right here. So negative 0.193x plus 83.75 is less than 70. Solving that inequality would give you the, the year that you're after. And you might even be able to look at this trend and say, okay, when is this gonna be 70? And you might be able to guess what the year is. But we're gonna calculate it exactly, just using some algebra. So negative 0.193x, we're gonna subtract this 83.75 from both sides. And that would give us less than negative 13.75 and then we're going to multiply or divide both sides by negative 0.193. That's going to change the sign, but a negative divided by a negative is positive. So I'm going to take this 13.75 and divide by 0.193. And that's 71.24. Now the inequality sign is important because they want the year. Um, and so we're going to have to say that the next whole number greater than 71.24 is about 72. So 72 plus 1985 is 2057. Now I suspect that that trend is not going to continue. And so we're probably going to hit you know, less than 70% of all energy production is fossil fuel before 2057, I would guess. And I guess that depends also who the president is moving forward, because some support fossil fuels more than others. All right, well, that's the problem. And you're going to see lots of context. Every time you're pretty much going to do these same things. 
Sometimes they'll give you the equation and then you can confirm it by using your calculator. Other times um, they won't give you this equation and you're just going to use the equation that the calculator gives you here. Next example, cigarette smoking. So we've got both um, percentage of males that smoke in the United States. This might surprise you, but um, it uh, up in here, about 25% of males smoked in, uh, in 2015, it was only 16. So the percentage of males that smoke in the United States has gone down dramatically, smoking cigarettes that is. And you can see the percentage of females that smoke over that period from 97 to 2015 has also been going down. So as the year goes up, the percentage goes down. And so this is a, it's gonna have a negative slope to it, this line as well. Okay, so um, go ahead and use this equation and answer questions A and B. If you wanna uh, confirm while you're working on that, I'm gonna go through the steps again to enter in the data. All right, here's another one where it says T is the time since 1997. So if I create my variable T over here, then the values for T since 1997, 1977, 1997 would be zero years after 1997. So we put a zero there for T and then goes up three, and then another three, and then another three, and then four, and then five. So it doesn't always go up by the same amount, but if you wanna generate this one here, then you have to type in those T values into L1. And since we're interested in the percentage of females that smoke, this column right here is going to be the one that we focus on for L2. All right, so transferring these two columns over. You don't need all of the columns, just the ones that are relevant to the problem. Make sure that 0 and 22.1 matched up, 3 and 21.0. 6 and 19.2 and so on. It's always useful to go through it like this. But the steps are always the same. So um, let me just do this. And here you have the graph. And then what I did this time is in y equals, I entered in this equation right here in for y equals. So not only is plot one turned on, which is a scatter plot, but also this equation is turned on. And just so you know that if you're going to graph something like this in your graphing calculator, it has to be entered in with X's and Y's. Your calculator knows only X's and Y's. But you can see that that line is a pretty good fit. If you want uh, more accuracy, we're going to calculate the line of best fit. And you can see this number here rounds to negative 0.45. And this number here rounds to 22.20. So we confirm that this equation shows the relationship between the year number of years after 1997, and the percent of U.S. adult females that smoke. All right, estimate the first year in which the percentage of, of women that smoke. And it says, estimate the first year in which the percentage of female smokers is less than 10%. And I'm writing 10% um, as 10 because all of our Y values are coded that way. This means 22.1% and we write it this way and not 0.221. All right, so we're gonna focus in on this equation here, subtract 22.20. That gives you negative 12.20.
So this is why we had you do a little bit of uh, inequality solving back in section 1.1, because you're going to be doing it here. So x is greater than 12.2 divided by 0.45. Uh, divide both sides by negative 0.45. Twenty-seven point one 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 one. Now our x here is actually the year after nineteen ninety-seven, and estimate the first year for which. Okay, and so x the year is larger than twenty-seven. So I have uh, the first year would be twenty-eight. Notice we're not rounding. So it turns out that if you add 1997 plus 27, you're going to get 2024. In the year 2024, you're not quite going to have the percentage less than 10%. But if you wait to the next year, 1998, oops, if you wait to the next year, which is 2025, then at that point, you will have a number larger than 27.11. And that's the first year for which the percentage will drop below 10. And you can actually see this on, a, uh, on the table feature of your calculator. So if I go to uh, the table, and I just start typing in numbers that make sense. All right, so maybe I'll go um, 13, there's this number here, and then 18, and then maybe 20. We know that the answer is about 27. So let me go 25, 26, 27, 28. All right, so you can see in, in, in 27 years later, in 2024, you're still above 10.5, you know, 10%. But in the next year, 2025, that's when you dip below 10%. So what I did is I just put all these x values and plugged them into this equation. And it calculated the y value. So somewhere between 27 and 28 is where we make the transition from above 10% to lower than 10%. Uh, Okay, so all of the other problems involve a different context, but the, uh, the math is, is the same. Draw the scatter plot, find the equation of best fit line, and then like interpret the slope and make some predictions. Kind of the same things over and over again. Uh, the hardest part is just to figure out um, the context. Understand the context. Are you talking about the values of bulldozers or the percentage of of female smokers in the United States. This changes every time.